Hello, everybody, and welcome to another PMP end of month review. Why? What is the PMP? Well, that's Painters Motivating Painters. That is our Facebook group focused on helping you take your next step on your hobby journey. If you're interested in joining us in the PMP, why the link is down in the description. You can find it there and uh, join up every month. We invite members of our community to post an image based on a theme. This month's theme is units, a full unit of troops. And uh, sometime during that month for critique. Uh, if you, you cannot post more than one thing a month, if you post, uh, give a short description of what you're looking for as far as feedback. We welcome everybody from beginners to masters. We all help each other. It's a positive uh, community really focused on reaching out and lending a hand as others have lent hands to us in the past. So with that, let's dive right in. So we start out here uh, with, sorry, get my mouse to work. There we go. We start out with uh, Tenku, uh, finished Stormcast Eternals, the Steel Hearts Champions, looking for general feedback. Sure. Um, these guys look really nice. Uh, classic sort of, you know, gold Hammers of Sigmar, uh, frame there. I like the mud on the cloak. Um, you've got some nice battle damage that goes out and over the metal. I think that really works. Uh, yeah, all the colors are, are nice. Where I think I would love to see a little more attention is in things like his face. Um, so the his face looks rather flat. Not much variation there. Same with his hair. Um, the gold could use a little bit more focused reflections. So um, you, I like your shading. I actually think you've got a nice handle on the shading on gold. But a little bit more control of the highlights and where we're placing those, I think, would help. Also, be careful when you cast reflections onto metal. It's not exactly how reflective glows onto metal work. It just, the metal reflects, it's reflecting light. It's not reflecting blue, but it's still that color metal as well. And it shouldn't really be that bright. Like, it would be more faded unless there was, like, a light line in the center. And then that would still come up to white because it would be reflecting pure white light with just a soft blue glow around it or something like that. Um, so I think probably smoothing out the, the mid to highs of the metallics, focusing in your highlight placement on the metallics, especially with like edging with uh, silver or something like that. And then more colored depth into things like the flesh. There's not a lot of it here, um, but stuff like that. His hair really stands out. But great stuff overall. Um, good job uh, on this. I really like your blues. I think those look really nice. You did a great job of capturing a lot of depth in those colors. Great tonal variation there. Overall, very solid unit. So, yeah, came out really nice. All right, next up, John. Uh, he's got these Infinity Boys. And he had two sort of, or I guess in girl, I don't know, whatever, these figs. And the question is, uh, basically, like, does the main model stand out? Uh, and are the bases, does it, does the, the weathering and if it reads or not, uh, says he was going for above a tabletop standard as close to display as he could. Sure. These guys look really nice. Orange is always hard to get good contrast with. I think one of the things you could have done was integrate a little of the magenta into the, the, all of these guys. It looks like you pushed it on these two. I actually think these two align with her better than these two. The other thing that you could have done to make them more aligned is you could have brought the sort of turquoise color that's on her more into them. You, you feel, I feel like you kind of used it in the metal, but you could have just straight up made the metal kind of that color with still non-metallic highlights and then added a little more contrast to her. She does stand out a lot, but the other thing we could have done with her is actually to desaturate that pink tone a little. Uh, that is to say, like, to bring that down, add more highlights, a little more shadows, that kind of stuff, that would make it, it the, the problem you have right now isn't really that there's a color differential, it's that there's a there's an extreme saturation differential. Because she is this extremely saturated pink and none of them are really saturated oranges. So I think a little bit of push and give back and forth, a little magenta into the orange kind of in the way you used it in the shadows here on these two. And then uh, a little bit more of the turquoise overlapping and then a little bit of desaturation on her. But overall, these guys look really nice. Uh, I think you did a great job. You asked for about the weathering on the bases. Yeah, it works for me. I don't like it looks like I get you were going for like sort of mud stains and stuff like that. That all sells to me. I don't I don't see any issue there. Look, looks perfectly good. So, yeah, bases. Successful. No issues for me. I think they look great. Okay, next up, Jacob. Uh, he says he was forced into this. Uh, so white with some depth to it. Painted in airbrush, oils, and acrylics. Any thoughts? 
Yeah, stormtroopers are always kind of boring, unfortunately. Um, honestly, for, for what these guys are, and, you know, for a project you said you were forced into, I think these guys look fine. The, the white actually isn't my problem. The blue on their shoulder pads looks really flat. It has no depth to it, no color, no shading, no highlights. Um, that's actually the part that doesn't look as, as, that feels like it needs to stand out more. The white, I feel like you did a good job with. It feels gray. There's, you could probably push the highlights up a little more, especially the sort of volumetric highlighting around the top of them. So top of the helmet here, front of the shoulder pads, top of the arms, basically this area and up of the, the mini, just to make that be really, really white and stand out. That could have come to like a pure cold white. Um, other than that, I think that's probably the, the only thing I'd change on the white, but overall, yeah, cool stuff. All right, next up, Christopher, uh, novice in the hobby, painting his first army. Uh, since everything is new to me, I have a lot of room to grow. Do you see any areas of specific skills you think I should focus on? Well, my best advice is always, Christopher, is keep plugging away, right? Like there's, there's when you're, when you're starting, the basic things you want to learn are things like brush control and controlling your paint and stuff like that. So that's always what I'm going to tell you to work on. Just keep painting, uh, and you know, and, and keep focusing in every time you you're going to learn a lot just by doing because you're going to learn those important things about brush control and controlling your paints and how to thin them and properly apply them and that kind of stuff now that being said it looks like you're doing a perfectly great job here like for just starting out in the hobby i think these look very nice the main thing we lack here is contrast right so tonal variation contrast of value light and dark the gold is on very flat i don't see a lot of shading there the white is very flat the, the blue is very flat i have lots of videos on contrast in my channel um, as do others. Um, Trevarian has a great uh, video on contrast that I would recommend to go check out. His is really top notch. Um, but it feels like you, I don't see anything where it looks like the paint wasn't going where it should. It looks like it's rather, you know, cleanly applied. So you're, you're, you know, you're, you've got the fundamentals down now. It's just about building on those and then building in things like how to understand contrast and light and stuff like that. So that's where I would tell you to go. That's going to be your next step. But thanks for submitting and good stuff. Keep on the journey, man. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that your brother has pulled you into our world. Okay, next up, Alexis. Uh, speed painted tabletop minis. What you think of the artistic choice and give some advice on how to prove this kind of fast work. Sure, so like I completely get the concept of the speed painting. Um, my, my advice would be when you're doing stuff like this, it's good to have one contrasting element that can stand out. So I understand the, the need the need for speed, and I think the red works, but that's actually not making them stand out individually because it's sort of an amorphous red that's kind of scattered around, right? So if you had a pop color that was set against that, imagine there was like a turquoise detail or something. I don't know. Maybe it could be, you know, a, every one of them has a different turquoise detail, a top knot, a piece of cloth, something like that. Uh, the red itself isn't really sort of doing all that work. That can be a good way to do it. The other thing that you want to always focus on is that you still keep the elements separated um, when you're doing this. And I think that most of these are successful on that, but some of them, it kind of flows together, right? So even just like a little bit of extra highlighting or black lining, you can do that through like an oil wash that you just slap on there and then wipe off, you know, or, or an enamel wash or something like that. Um, just those kinds of things to make sure that the individual elements stay nice and separate, I think can also be a good trick. So when you're talking about speed it's about you know a single small pop color against this pop if you like you have your your basically gray and then red is your primary color then you have a pop color which is sort of a secondary or tertiary color usually and that's what feels like it's missing to me so hope that helps all right next up uh robin uh tried to paint a gang and not painting forever still wanted to try pulling off an osl effect on their faces from below or at least have something new to practice Feedback on how to make the OSL, OSL effect better and what other quick methods adjustment to lift these. Sure. Okay, and he said, P.S. He does know he needs to drill the barrels. Good. Yeah, so, you know, OSL is a tough effect to pull off. It, it, it isn't a quick method. I mean, that's my ultimate answer, okay? Like, if you're trying to do quick, you don't do OSL. And those are two things that don't go together. That's like, I'm trying to get in shape, so I'm going to slam five large Domino's pizzas. Like, incorrect. These are... These two things do not go together, right? Um, but I understand the, the discussion of sort of visual interest. That's fine. And, and get why you would want to want to go that direction. The, the, the challenge with it is it doesn't, like, I, I understand what you're saying. You tried to have the helmet glow here, right? 
the problem is the helmet glow doesn't really sell. It just looks like there's yellow inside of there, right? Because to get the, the glow to sell, it has to be brightest here and then have a dark spot and then catch lightly here and up here and be reflected from below. It's just like, it's, it's work. It's a lot of work. So my answer is it doesn't really sell. And moreover, it's not the kind of thing I would do if I was trying to go quickly is, is unfortunately the answer. Like it, it, it just ends up being not the best thing to try. Um, that kind, that particular glow you're trying, the inner helmet glow, is actually a really tough one to sell because of the nature of the helmet. So not only have you tried a really tough technique, you've also applied it in one of the most complicated ways. These two things just don't work for speed. <clears throat> now, if I was going to talk about how we make this better in a fast way, right, I would be looking at improving things that are that people pay attention to. And people pay attention to bases, faces, weapons. Okay. So when you think about where do I focus my energy, one of the keys to speed painting is you can almost basically not paint the feet and the legs and back and stuff like that. If the face and maybe there's a couple of reflection points on the shoulders and then the weapon looks cool, that's all people notice. And a lot of your weapons are really flat. Like this is a great example, right? And this is the problem. A lot of the faces, the ones that have some purple in them look cooler. Some of these that are just more Caucasian skin toned don't, look, have, don't have the same visual interest. So when you're thinking about where do I dedicate my time to have the most visual impact in a, in a, in a project, bases, faces, weapons, okay? Make the, those three things look cool. No one will look at anything else. That's where you want to spend your time to draw the eye in and get cool effects. So that's my best advice. Hope that helps. By the way, just as a quick aside, this one, this glow right here, just to talk, just to drill in this one more second, this girl glow right here works the best because it fits up over his back of his head, unlike just below. It's orange. You have a dark area in here, which is important because you want bright, dark, bright, right? It's in the simplest form, OSL. And so it's brightest here. And then there's a little bit of orange that looks like it reflects up and a little bit of orange in the back of his head. The yellow ones don't work because they don't have the same transition. So this is a, this is a good actual example of like one that works and one that doesn't. Um, but these other guys don't have the same back piece either that would allow you to kind of show the reflection easier. If you think about like, uh, who is it, Abaddon or Horus or I don't know, somebody, whoever this normally gets done on. I don't, I don't know 40K people. Whatever the big bad guy is, uh, they often paint him with that red glow internally. And, you know, he has a whole thing around his head, which lets you sell the effect, right? Okay, next up, Tusk. Uh, first submission year, been painting for a long time, but trying to up my skills and become a better painter. Unit of Ungors to Spears, wanting to see where I'm currently at. I feel that my biggest issue skill aside is my color choice theory. Sure. Um, yeah, I don't really have any issue with color choice. I mean, ungors are not the most super exciting thing often if they're just kind of browns. Like, when I look at these guys, they're fine. They're they're painted well. But there's nothing visually remarkable about them. Like, you painted them well, but they don't stand out in any way. The alternating Christmas pa pattern thing, like, that is a not a great color composition choice because you use a saturated red and a saturated green, and as the unit, they look Christmassy. If you had used a darker red and a brighter green or a darker green and a very faded red, like you could use, the point is you can't use the, both those two saturated colors together or it's like bing bang Christmas. Welcome to Christmas, right? When I say they don't stand out, what I mean is you didn't give me anything to like grab onto. You didn't give me anything that tells me these are here. They don't have incredible, like you need to take your contrast, your tonal variation on things like the skin up higher, the contrast on the cloth higher, contrast on the weapons, the wood, there's no texture on the wood. There's no shading or highlights on the metallics. There's no tattoos or something on the flesh. The face doesn't really stand out, you know. So, like, when you think about how you push that stuff, it's all of those kinds of elements that you want to use to push that thing to the next level, right? And you don't have to do all those. Is I could name more. But the point is, you don't have, that's, I'm not saying you got to do all of them. These are freaking Ungor. Like, let's be reasonable here, okay? Come on now. These aren't display-level models. you got to paint a bajillion of these guys. But the key is to pick some of those things that you can reasonably achieve and go that direction. You could also compositionally do things like uh, make their skin have more interesting colors in them. Like right now, they tend to be, their skin is very neutral. 
but if I saw reds and purples and, and other interesting tones or colors in there, instantly again, they're going to become more visually compelling, right? And then you won't feel the need, because my guess is you got to them, that you looked at them, they were like, oh, these are all brown. I've got these old tabards. I know. I'll use two very strong colors, red and green, and that'll add some visual interest. But you don't want visual interest down in between their legs, because now my eye just cannot look anywhere else but their crotch. That is going to be a weird thing to put out on the internet. But the the point is that that's you want to draw the eyes need to be drawn to faces. This is where the visual interest should be, not down here in between their legs. Okay, so those should be desaturated, boring colors. You want up here to be the interesting stuff. So hope that helps, Tusk. Okay, next up, um, Kai. Probably not the most typical unit. Some feedback on how to make them look more coherent. Any pointers on how to improve and bring them to next level? Sure. So, you know, trying to make sort of the classic adventuring party group, you know. So how do we bring figures like this that are, you know, naturally very different together? So the first thing we do is we pick a single color and we stretch it across all of them. Uh, it's usually a secondary color, not a primary color. Otherwise, they look like they're wearing a uniform. But secondary colors, it just looks like it's integrated. So, for example, she, this. let's just pick out a color here. Let's say this girl's purple cloak. That's a nice secondary area from the front. You don't see much of it. This guy's jacket could be purple. Um, this girl's cloak could also be purple. This guy's inner shirt could be purple. Okay. Now we have a visual signifier that ties them all together. So those kinds of elements go a long way. You already did the first part, which is you always make sure they're kind of on the same basis because that, that is another way to bring things together. Um, the other piece of feedback I would give you is just like, again, more contrast. We need more tonal variation across stuff. The leather here you did looks the best of all of it because it has lots of interesting texture and things like that going on. This guy with his various like woolen and or girl, I guess, I'm sorry, um, with her like woolen silks and things of that nature is kind of the least interesting um, because there's just not enough going on there. Um, as a note with clothing and stuff like this where you've got these kind of edges but it's clearly soft cloth i would be wary of using actual metallic gold paints on it um it's just often better to do it in a matte color or in a pseudo non-metallic style even just because they it, it reads strange to our eye to see that kind of metal feeling on something that is clearly cloth yes i know clothes oftentimes had gold thread worked in um, but they still didn't reflect like metallic. So, uh, so there you go. Those are kind of my thoughts. Hope that helps Kai. Overall, cool stuff. Neat party. Looks like a very fun D and D party. I want to be a part of. Okay. Uh, all right. Next up, Oscar, uh, first time submitting. Uh, this is for good tabletop quality. Sure. So general feedback. Yeah, I mean, so so I'll say two things here. And, you know, oftentimes if people put in their comments, like, what kind of quality level they were going for, that's usually what I'll, like, where I can, you know, set my expectations to. So, I mean, I will say, as far as tabletop quality, these guys are fine. Now, as far as, uh, you know, if you're trying to go higher, if the question was, well, where do we go from here? The answer is quite a lot. So, like, um, and by that, I don't mean anything insulting. I just mean, there's, I'm sure you knew there's plenty of space to grow. Like tonal variation on the various two exposed skins, more reds, more purples, more highlighting and shadows and colors in there, both variation of hue and contrast. Um, a little bit of cleaning up of the paint job. There's some places here that are a little messy. Um, more highlighting and variation on things like the fur, the scales, the leathers, you know, things like that would all be sort of your next logical steps if you were going to go that direction and try to take it up. Okay. But again, for tabletop, I think it's a perfectly good job. I like the sort of, um, I don't know what to call it, but the blue metallic scheme, I think that works. One thing you can still do is hand mix a slightly lighter silver blue and use that for edge highlighting. Um, that will oftentimes really make that pop as well. So just a quick note there. All right, next up, <clears throat> Cecil. Uh, Gabapalooza, overall things that need added or improved. Um, tried to make the units so they had cohesive colors that they told more or less a story since they're all so different. Yeah. So this is a good example of what I was talking about before. Um, because yes, I think you did achieve that here. Purple, 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 purple. Yep. They all checks out everything. Like I see the cohesive element. It's right there. Um, you know, again, it's going to be much the same. I think this unit's really nice. Your purples are a little flat, so those need some some more love. Uh, check out my exploring color exploring colors purple video um, for more to do there on what you can do. Love the mushroom 
Love the ghost mushroom that's scaring him. The yellow here actually looks really nice. That the, the sort of moon mommet face thing, whatever this is called. I think that looks really good. It's more, mainly like the purples on the cloaks. Um, when it comes to the goblin skin, think about adding in other tones. So just like with human skin, we don't want to see it all in just Caucasian skin tones or dark skin tones, but we want to see other tones in there. Same here. Um, this guy's interesting because he has a little purple on the back of his weird giant head. You know, if you had other, like a little bit of pink in their nose, especially the, the sort of albino goblin here, he looks really, really flat. So again, more purples or, or light magentas or something like that worked into him to make him feel alive and not like he's a weird sort of alabaster statue, I think would go a long way. Um, so here it's more the contrast of value on the purple and then hue on some of the goblin skin. That's what I would tell you. So hope that helps. All right, next up, we've got uh, Peter. Basically, this is his, his Hobgrotz, and he really wants a beautiful army, and he wants a swampy, warm tone color scheme, but he's worried that there won't be any eye-catching colors or tonal contrast. Uh, I'd love to hear my opinions and thoughts as a judge. Sure. So let me say that I, I, I think this is looking really nice, and I don't think that you've failed in any way at achieving poppiness. And that's because of the yellow and the contrast on the skin. You did a great job here with the musculature um, of picking out the individual muscles. And you did a great job with the yellow, like the gold areas or whatever they are, your sort of like non-metallic pop area. I think that came out really, really well. These guys honestly look great. If I were to see these as a unit, you know, in someone, I'd be giving this a second look. Um, so I think you're really in a strong place. Now, where do we need to go from here, okay? So one of the things we want to do, let's, how far can we zoom in? There we go. Okay. So one of the things I want you to be a little careful of is the whole like weathering with these sort of non-metallics, right? Um, I think that's fine. You still are popping them out, but give me a couple more edges here where to make things really stand out and separate, you know, a couple more edges that are in a near white almost. So they kind of pop a little stronger. Um, with these yellows and golds, again, a couple light catches and a little more pop points at the top lights there. Those kind of things. Just little tiny dots to finish everything out. Little tiny scratches and lines to finish everything out. I mean, we're literally talking a few seconds of additional work here. Bases look great. Skin looks really nice. I think these guys are, are, are very cool. So I think you're well on your road is what I'll say. Good stuff, Peter. These are, these are really great. I hope by some weird chance I get to see these at a tournament someday. All right, next up. Uh, first time posting a nov novice painter. First army with Admech. Uh, general feedback, but was wondering about bases with the unit, making bases cohesive between models and grounding the unit into their base. Um, sure, so I don't think your bases feel bad. I think they feel coherent. Part of the issue is we've done the dreaded just some pieces of cork. That's where you've gone wrong. Like, just some pieces of cork are very obvious. If you're going to do this kind of thing, then they have to be, you have to mud over them, putty over them. You know, you've got to have like texture and stuff that brings it together. I have videos on this that'll, that'll kind of bring this together. I understand this supposed to be like broken up road or, you know, something of that nature. Um, the, so I, I feel like the, the unit looks nice, right? Um, what's my general feedback for you? Some of your metals are a little flat. Gun barrel isn't drilled, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, make sure you, you know, drill them gun barrels and make sure that you have the appropriate amount of variation and things like the blue, the blue is a little flat. The metals don't have enough variation in them, not enough highlights, not enough shadows, that kind of stuff. Um, you're doing a good job with the variation of hue. Uh, the weathering looks really good. I like a lot of the mud and stuff on the bottom of their capes and on their shoes. I think you did a great job. They feel very immersed in their world. So that's strong. Um, but yeah, it's mainly just that there's not enough popping out as far as the highlights go on their main color, which is blue, uh, to really grab my attention. And then the little red catches feel very flat. Like those as well feel very, very, very flat. The red feels more flat than the blue. So also same notes there. And drill those barrels. I'll always notice. But good stuff. Like overall, they look cool. When you do those kind of, those kind of um, bases of cork, just make sure you have putty, mud, something coming up around the side. So it's because if you if I can see the edges so clearly as the entire piece of cork, 
It's just, it's immediately obvious, right? So that's what you want to do. All right, Chris, uh, my goal is to get from army painter to display painter. With that in mind, I've tried painting these different. I used an airbrush and oil paints to get the highlights. Uh, I really stepped up my game, though I just wanted them finished near the end. I feel my TMM is lacking, but I still can't seem to get it right, even after watching your videos. Um, sure. So, first of all, you know, the question was, what would you recommend to get to a new level? Is it the next level? Is it just constant practice? Yes. Yes. And, you know, realistically, what do I like? Okay, so we've got good, like, again, your bases look nice. I like you brought the dust up on the feet. The colors all seem applied fine. What do we need What do we need attention to? Hi, the edge highlights, way too chonky. So we've got to get those thinned way up, right? Like, way down. Those should be razor blades on the edge of the Space Marines, right? Secondly, we don't have as, like, with the, with the oil paints and stuff, we, you know, that gives us the opportunity to do volumetric highlighting. When you do volumetric, you, then you need to treat these things each as one individual volume, and we're not really doing that with the edge highlighting, right? Secondly, these guys are still very satin, very glossy. I should not see this kind of reflection in here. Like, that's not paint. That's the reflection of your light. I shouldn't see that, right? So um, you want to make sure that you, you kind of mat that stuff out before you put on any metallics. Now, with the TMM, I agree. They are still a little boring. Um, and the key to that is, again, like, these shoulder pads are terrible for it, is my honest answer. But it's complicated to explain, but I'll do my best here. When you have a lot of fuzzy detail like that, it, you need to flatten it in your mind and then say, okay, where do the highlights fall? There's going to be a sheaf of light up here on this side of the shoulder and on this side of the shoulder. Okay, those areas should be silver. The edges should be silver. And then I bring things down into darkness around there. But then I then, okay, so that's the general highlight. Then I got to go back in and in a sharp way, start catching the upper sides of the little details that are nearest the light that would then reflect up edges, right? So you treat them as one volume and then you slowly zoom in and catch the miniature volumes. It's a tricky thing to explain. I'm, I might try to do a video about it sometime, but um, it's, you know, it, it's hard. Uh, so those would be my main pieces of advice, Chris. I, I hope that helps. You know, keep at it. You're, you're doing well here. It's just a matter of, like I said, getting more of those fundamentals of volumetric highlighting down, and I think you'll be in a good place. Okay. Alex, uh, Dire Wolves for Soul Blight Army. What areas can you improve in general advice on the unit would be appreciated? Well, first of all, I love these guys. I love that you went nuts with the colors. Yes, yes. I love it. Like, I love it, man. I love that you were like, yeah, let's get some wild colors in here. Let's go magentas, purples, greens, yellows. Like, let's get into it. Let's get amongst it. Uh, I think that looks fantastic. There is no need for variation of hue here. You are nailing it. Craft World Studio would be on board with this. There, you, you've got so much color in here. Um, so that looks great. Uh, you know, what do we need to, to do? Um, probably, uh, like, these guys look really nice. It's probably more pick out some of the individual details. I mean, they are dire wolves. But there's some areas where your details don't quite have as much life as they do. Like, the fur is, like, you did highlight the fur, but it's highlighted the same on the top as it is on the bottom here. Right. And that's not actually what would happen. This would be more lit than these. Tracing, you know, some more smaller, thinner lines, stuff like that. Um, having a little more interesting variation around some of the faces. Like, some of the faces are still a little flat. Um, like, you know, you look at this guy, I love the color in his muzzle. But then, like, his ears and this area under his jaw don't feel like they have the shading or the definition that they should. Those are the little things that stand out to me. But overall, this unit looks really good. I dig the heck out of it. I mean, I think you're, this is fantastic. I, I, if you're doing a whole Soul Blight Grave Lords army with this kind of like smack you in the face color variation, this is going to be a super cool looking army. So uh, I love it. All right, next up, Josh. Uh, first entry in the monthly review. One of the first unit converters I've ever done. I hope you can overlook any problems on the conversion front. General feedback you would give if you were judging this as part of an army at a tournament. Um, sure. Yeah, so... Uh, it's a little small. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Yeah, so it's nice. Again, the issue we have is I don't have enough contrast, right? Like, there's not enough tonal variation. This probably wouldn't catch my eye at a tournament, is my honest answer. 
Like, I like what you're going for with the texture, but it's not small enough. It's not applied strongly enough is unfortunately the answer. You don't have enough deep shadows. So like all of the, the sort of salmon color, it doesn't have any shadows. It doesn't have any life to it in what's going on. So again, that contrast of value with the skin, the skin is applied very flatly. I don't see the, the tones that I would expect in there. Um, like when, if you're going to do textures, it has to be something you commit to. It can't just be some scratchy lines. It has to have purpose and meaning to it, right? Like there has to, you have to be, it has to have a building contrast and then disappear in the shadows. And there has to be deep shadows that look like it gives it reason not to be there at that moment because it's out of the light. Um, things like the metals and, and the the actual like shields, those need a lot more contrast, right? Or life scratches, textures, weathering something. Things like the gold and the little scales need to be, you know, picked out individually. It's those kinds of elements that are going to make you stand out. I mean, it's... Uh, when I'm, again, I'm telling you all this because I'm telling you like if I was judging you for a tournament, right? And, you know, when, when you're talking about tournament level painting, right? Like you want to be an army that's on the podium in the top 10%, you know, all of those things need to be on point uh, from the from the rip, right? So those would be my areas that I would focus you in on. I hope that helps, Josh. All right, next up, Sean, uh, Malifo crew. Yep, uh, especially uh, general feedback, especially related to the general feel and color choices, cohesiveness of the crew and the non-metallic metal. Yeah, so I, the crew certainly works together. That's no issue at all. Um, they all have a sort of very earthy vibe to them. Um, most of the flesh colors actually look fairly nice. Um, that is to say, like, I like this green guy over here. This dude certainly has some nice tones in his face. Uh, dead person over here, I'm not so sure about. Maybe a little more purples and things like that, where they're, you know, you want bruised flesh where it's attached into, uh, into machine, you know, like if the flesh would get sort of messed up and things like that. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of give and take you've got. Always be thinking about, here, here's, here's my simple answer for you, Sean. When you're doing flesh tones, this is the question you always need to ask yourself. How do I get more color in here? What are more colors that would make sense in this? That and like you need to think through every permutation. Oh, it's attached to metal. Cool. Purples, uh, you know, magentas, bruises, blood showing, scratches, wounds, colors, pink in the cheeks, pink in the knuckles, or or you know, in the in the fingers and the hands and stuff like that. Uh, in the forehead, am I getting my highlights high enough? Am I moving through? Do I have brown shadows? Do I have, if it's a male, do I have a beard stubble shadow? If it's a female, have I brought all of the appropriate like T line up on the on the female face? You know, uh, have I added enough rosiness to the cheeks, red to the lips, all of these kinds of things. Just where can I keep putting color in there to create that visual hue, that difference of hue. Now, on the non-metallic metal, it doesn't super sell for me in a lot of these cases. Some of them are better than others. Um, like her shoulder is not bad, and there's pieces along here I don't mind. Um, this is way too hard of a transition along her breastplate, and this isn't how the light would work. Um, like it wouldn't just gather along the sort of bottom of the thing. It would create on, on flat planes, you get shafts of light, um, reflecting. So, you know, I think it varies based on clearly like the exact shape and then how well you tackled it. I'll say in general, it's a little rough. Um, so you want to make sure that you're, uh, that you're going back with, uh, your glaze steps and smoothing it out. Uh, love the bases. Uh, I own this same base set. It's a great base set, and you made it look really nice. So you did a great job pulling everybody together there. That super works for me. All right, next up, Dave. Uh, general feedback. Uh, I'm sorry, this is just general feedback and one or two pointers. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So yeah, good old Blood Knights. Uh, super fun. Uh, I like your color choices here. I like the orange red along with that sort of turquoise color. Um, there we go. I was hoping we had some more close up photos. A um, couple quick points. Let me just go into this guy because I'm just going to, this is my close up photo. A couple quick points. Uh, love this work of the black into the green. Give me a little bit more of a transition there. Like, so take a glaze of sort of a, a deeper green turquoise color and. Give me a glaze over the edge to kind of smooth that out just a little bit so it feels like there's a slightly more subtle transition um needs to we need to mat down the reds you're, you're working in reds reds are very glossy and satiny and i can see these reflections where i shouldn't be able to like notice how your shadows here are creating reflections that makes your paint job look messy 
Shadows should be shadows. They should not reflect light. When you have satin paint jobs, then shadows start reflecting light and everything looks wrong. So that is something you want to make sure you address there. Make sure you, you know, before you put on any metallics, you uh, matte varnish those guys out. Like I, we could improve so many paint jobs in the world just by a, a strong application of ultra matte varnish. Um, as long as it was before the metallics. But the, um, but that I noticed that some of the bone in the horse is a little too flat. And then when it comes to this red armor, I like the color transition you're running. Just make sure you still, it's very even. Let's go back to this picture. So it's very even in how you've applied it, and it really shouldn't be. Like, that is to say, these lower, more hidden sections should be darker and have less of the orange. And then these up top areas should have more and brighter area and come to higher highlights and have stronger edges. Those would be my one or two things I'd give you. So, hope that helps. All right, next up, Matt O'Brien. Uh, working on these guys for my second army, trying to get them to pop on the tabletop through high contrast in the armor. Interesting basing and added freehand. Sure. All right, so let's uh, let's talk through these guys. Basing. Did we get there? Yes, we did. I have no issue with it. I like it. It's great. It looks interesting. Yeah, it's fine. Good stuff there. Armor. Uh, on the contrast. Decent. We can go farther, but it's not through the highlight. It's through the shadows. What we're missing here is our deep shadows. You popped a bunch of stuff up with the airbrush. You blew away your shadows. You never built them back in. Um, as to the highlight level, just remember, if you're going to go this direction with this high contrast armor, you're also going to need the edge highlights. Now, freehand. Okay, freehand is a thing. You've certainly added a lot of it. I have no issue with that, but if you're going to do it, it has to be cleanly applied. So a lot of your freehand is very rough, and what I mean by that is, like, it doesn't... The freehand has to be, like, smoothly applied where it has edges, and it looks not like paint put on, but a part of the thing it's it's sitting in. One of the ways you can fake that on things like shields and, and stuff like that is you run scratches over the shield and then into the freehand. You scratch away the freehand with either to reveal the blue or you put a big scratch through that goes all the way under the armor. Your best freehands here are the ones that still have like, that have a solid definition and look completed. It doesn't matter that they're sort of squidgy lines and things like that. That's all fine. That stuff can sell. You don't need to be a great artist to do freehand. You're, you're, so I have no issue with like the, the image choices you've made. You just need to make sure that they still suit the overall environmental contrast you've created. So like on the shield, you have like, here's, here's a good example. Here's your highlight on the shield. This is a shadowed side. Freehand, completely the same. Right? This is what makes it look painted and not actually like it lives in that world. It's not respecting the same environmental highlights that the shield itself is. So it looks like it's sitting on top of it, living in a different world than the rest of the lighting, right? So if you're going to do freehand over top of things, it has to it has to pay attention. The freehand itself is an image on that is under the same light, and it has to heed the same light as everything else, okay? So that's your biggest challenge. Like, when it comes to these shields, if you're going to run that freehand all over there, then, like, okay, this guy, this side of this should be way darker than this side. Either you do that by when you do the freehand, you paint it on and you make it a darker version of the other image, or you go back afterward with your airbrush and you apply a sort of universal environmental shadow and you bring it all down with like some subtle glazes of Payne's gray or something. So there you go, Matt. Hope that helps. All right, next up, uh, Tomas, uh, Mordheim Warband. Oh, certainly that counts as unit. Who doesn't love a good classic Mordheim Cult of the Possessed? Um, contrast as well as the color choices and cohesion of the models. Time from its opinion on the skin, where I went pale, pinkish for humans, purplish brown for the beastmen. Also, how does the TMM look? A lot. You got a lot. You got a lot of questions, but that's okay. Let's look at these guys. Short answer. They're great. I really like them. These are not favorable sculpts. I, I own this whole warband. I own most of the Mordheim warbands. Uh, Mordheim was truly one of my early great loves, uh, in this, in, in the world of Warhammer. And, uh, I think the different skin tones works. I have no problem with the different beast, beast men's, beast man's, beast man. I have no problem with the different skin tones. Um, your contrast on a lot of the clothing elements is really nice. I gotta say, I like the way you're treating the purples. I think that looks good. We're achieving some deep shadows there. I like how we're achieving the gray. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, for a for a Mordheim warband, I don't know what level you're going for, but I think these guys look pretty freaking great. Where would we go up from here? A little more weathering, maybe on some of the copper elements, picking out some of the things like some of their accoutrement does not have the same level of detail. So like the skulls don't have the same level of contrast, graining on the wood, like so texturing and stuff like that would be a place to go to take them up. Again, I don't know what level you're aiming at, so this could all be like way overboard. They, they don't need this. They look great, okay? Um, I think this one's my favorite, honestly, of the whole bunch. Um, I think the skin tone sells for me here. I see lots of purples and pinks and stuff like that mixed into the tone. Um, the weapon has a lot of different colors on it. Love the black and the axe. By the way, it's the other way around. The black should run against the edge of the blade, right? So think about the lights hitting this like this. It's going to be this this area here is going to be the darkest shadow because the light has cascaded off. So, um, but... Uh, but nonetheless, like that's these are just minor quibbles. Um, I think these guys look fantastic. Yeah, short answer. So like you could do those extra textures and stuff like that, but it's not necessary. Great stuff, man. Great stuff, Tomas. Okay, next up, Space Wolves. So this is Intercessor Squad, and looking for feedback on the level of contrast. Yeah. So this is a tough one. Let's talk about Space Wolves. I hate Space Wolves. Like. To the core of my being, I despise this entire concept chapter. I just think they're whatever. I, I hate them. I hate their baby blue, powder blue color scheme. I hate their story. I hate their rules. I hate everything about them. They're my least favorite thing in all of Warhammer 40k. That being said, uh, you're right. The contrast is flat. And that's tough. That's not necessarily your fault. When you're working with something like Ultramarines it's really easy to get the contrast in there because they're just sort of a mid-tone, traditional, literal, ultramarine blue. Um, and that takes shadows very well. Same with, like, Dark Angels or Blood Angels or something like that. All of those have, like, really easy shadows. When you're working in the baby powder blue space uh, wolves, they don't really take shadows super easily. My best advice for space wolves is you want to use something like a thin Payne's gray and just glaze in soft shadows so Payne's gray is like a deep blue black and generally it's going to be your best bet at working naturalistic shadows into space wolves um especially if you have a sort of warm highlight which is how people actually tend to highlight this stuff um, space wolves they actually tend to end up pushing a little more into the warm highlight area than they do into the cold ironically usually when i see them um because of things like there's a lot of yellow on their one shoulder pad and the it's just the nature of kind of how the colors work up um so that cold shadow of a blue black can actually work really well and yeah i mean it is something you need to push but it's hard it's really hard so i, I don't beat yourself up over it but yeah glazing in some soft panes gray that's going to be your best bet. Grab yourself some Dollar Rowney FW Payne's Gray ink. Glaze some of that in there. That's going to be a winner for you. So, there you go. Uh, good looking unit, though. Nice clean paint job. Like the battle damage. This looks nice. It's just Space Wolves are really, honestly, one of the trickier chapters to paint. All right, Steve Smith. Uh, this unit of Warriors, part of a larger speed paint tabletop project. I recently completed his first 40K army. About 45 minutes per mini, not including builds. Very nice. Uh, feedback and observations. Uh, general opinions, obvious areas of improvement. If you were to spend 15 minutes more on each, what would you do? Sure. So I looked through these guys earlier. Um, I really like them. I think the weapons, again, bases, faces, weapons. Uh, your weapons in this army look really great. Uh, love the work you did with the orange. Super simple, but highly effective. These guys look like they're carrying some super sweet guns. I think that is a tremendous success. Uh, I like how you popped out all the eyes and stuff like that. I have no problem with any of that. If I were going to spend just a few more minutes on these guys... Oh, by the way, the bases look good, too. Love the dry, arid earth. Like, for the amount of time you spent, these guys came out absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful, Steve. This is a this is a fantastic speed paint, and Necrons are that kind of thing. Now, if I was going to spend a little more time on each of them, what would I do? I would focus in a little bit more on the top parts. Uh, that is to say, on the face, I'd bring up some highlights on the top of their heads, top of their shoulder pads. Uh, maybe work in a couple other spot colors here or there, like take some copper or something, or some black, 
and I carve out other little parts of them that are different between like their armor and their carapace, either through bronze or black or something like that, and then pop up those the top of those the highlights on the on the uh, the top of the head, the top of the teeth, those kind of things, even a little more with a real pure silver. So that way, this top part is very reflective and and eye catching, especially along with the orange eyes, and it has some fight against those weapons. But overall, this is a this is a this is a smash success. So uh, yeah, great job. All right, next up, uh, Richard, brother to our earlier gentleman. Uh, I would love any and all uh, uh, CC and feedback. Uh, deliberate practice on these models to improve your leather game. Sure. Um, yeah, so, okay, so let's talk about these bad boys here. Let's talk about these bad boys. Here we go. So, the... With the leather, we need more, it's good, but we need more texture and variation of tone. So a little more hashing, scratching, hashing, scratching, dashes, and dots. Those are the keys. You want to let that brush just run wild over there. And then we want to bring those, those color transitions in through things like glazes of the color. So that's to continue to work on that. The other thing is a lot of it is end up, I, I would use a different leather color or a different skin color or something. Like, when you look at this group shot right here, you're using a green-brown leather and a green-brown skin tone. They're very, very, very similar. So, compositionally, the model looks like a bunch of green and then a red shield, right? Now, I like that you worked the pink into the orc face. That's good. But we either need, like, a much darker color leather would be good. Um, so, really bring it down into a deep brown-black tone or something or we need a different color skin. So that's the challenge. From a composition level, you never want your th these these elements to blend together like that. And on a lot of these guys, not all of them, but on a lot of them, there's just, you know, like their clothing and their skin are so close because they both have a true color of green that you didn't, you didn't allow space to really separate it with the model in your eyes. Um, this isn't gonna show it all, so it won't matter. You can go watch the Cruel Boys video that I did if you want to see what I'm talking about. But, you know, here's my Cruel Boy. Eh, that doesn't show up at all. No, that's pointless. Okay, that's fine. Go watch the video I did. <laughs> you'll see pictures of him in it. The Cruel Boys skin video. And you'll see the pictures, the final pictures at the end for how he's separated from the letters. So, there you go. All right. Next up, Richard, uh, thanks for the feedback. Finished up my unit of Death Shroud. Really looking for overall thoughts and things you like and think I'm doing good and some things you can still work on. Sure. Okay, so cool stuff here. Um, like the bases and how you've raised them up. Um, the color green is interesting. Uh, I don't, I don't see, you know, that's, that's looking nice. Now, things I don't love. Again, here we've got this shininess reflecting. Again, math these things out, people. If you, if you look at your model and it's reflecting light where you didn't paint light, it shouldn't be doing that. Unless it's like you, an oil slick or you know something that's naturally you want glossy. I, I, I want nothing glossy more or less ever unless it, except it's, unless it's metallic. Um, so like that needs to be mad out. And the cloaks themselves look dirty in the wrong way. They look dirty like I applied an enamel wash and didn't wipe it enough off or something like that. Um, because that's not how dirt collects in robes. Like dirt doesn't collect in a robe in this fold. There's no reason why that would be dirtier than anything else right dirt collects organically like that is to say it's going to gather from the bottom and go up in any area that moves a lot it's or where, where it would wipe you know there'd be like certain dirt that might be along there where it's scuffed because he moves his arm through stuff but you know for the most part dirt is going to gather in a, in a sort of organic way that makes sense according to you know gravity and what he walks through and things like that um the your We'll, we'll hone in on this guy because this, this is a, a good place to, to sort of be. Um, the I like the color of the green. You want to soften some of these edges just a little bit, need to thin them up. But I, I like this different choice of green. It feels super like radioactive. The, uh, the, the oxidation of things like the bells works okay. But on a big piece like this, we need more than just this green you know this sort of oxidation you want to work in browns blacks things like that you also want to make sure that the elements are still separated like why is this axe all bronze it wouldn't the blade be a metal color blade you know and or something like that like you know have the, the elements become different metals right 
Um, and you can still have oxidation on those kinds of metals because it ran over there. It can be orange rust and you can have some green worked in. It's fine. But you need more than just this green. You need deeper greens, blue greens, blue blacks, blacks, browns, all that kind of stuff worked in there on a big thing because it has to carry, it carries a lot more space. You know, if you, if you um, Google like oxidized bronze, right? Um, like, let's do that right now. Oxidized bronze. Okay. This is what it looks like. All right. All right. This stuff is, is, you can see there's different colors here, right? It's not all just like some one light color green. Um, once it turns, it turns. But the, the, the stuff underneath there that isn't green often turns black and has different colors like that working on it, right? So that kind of stuff. Uh, all right. So, so that's when I say when I say you got to pop that. So hope that helps, Rich. All right, next up, Jonas, uh, planning on doing a Cruel Boys Army. He's trying to keep it simple and fast-ish. Any tips and thoughts going forward would be appreciated. Yeah, so um, looking good. I like the yellow shield. It sounds like it looks like you're going for the Scare Boys scheme or whatever. But this picture tells a thousand words. Let's look at these guys. Let's all look here. And then let's flip over here. All right? And what we see is that with a lot of them, the skin, the leather, all of this that isn't the shield just falls into the same tone. All right? There's just There's just not much variation there. So when I look at this, I want to see more variation on the skin. I don't mind if the leathers are rough or like whatever. Again, scratches, scratches, dashes, hashes, dots. You know, get that texture in there. It's a fast, simple thing. You can do it with a stippling brush, an old brush. You just take it and you're like, bah, 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 bah. you just stab the thing for a few seconds. You run a glaze over it. You call it a day. It's not exactly like a thing that takes certainly a lot of work or a lot of time. But when it comes to the skin... You know, they're like their green skin. I need, I just need more contrast on it. I know you said you want to be a little fast. I respect that, but they have such interesting skin tones. Um, again, if you go look at my uh, Cruel Boy skin video, or even go go look at the recent video where I painted uh, an entire Iron Jaws army over a couple of days, and look at that skin contrast that I achieve in that with basically like just the undershading that I do through the the priming, and then one level of ink. And then some pink. That's it. Like it's it's one ink application, but I have tons of contrast because of what I did with the the prepping it up underneath, right? Through the through the undershading. So that would be my biggest piece of advice for you that I notice that way because if that skin pops, they're just gonna be way more interesting. So there you go. All right, next up, uh, Michael O'Leary been working on incorporating contrast of texture into this project, mostly on cloth and cords feedback as well as general suggestions or opportunities for improvement going for tabletop plus level sure so as far as tabletop plus goes i think you're you're there these guys all look nice the biggest challenge i have is that a lot of them are very sort of like they're very um there's not a lot of visual interest on them i like the little blue pop out things i think that works pretty well i like her pink hair She's really the only one I can look at. She's like the most visually interesting one of the bunch. Um, as far as the texture goes, let me zoom in here. I'm not sure I'm really seeing the texturing on the cloth or the leather. So I'd say, you know, scratches, hashes, dashes, and dots. This guy, I see it. I like him. I like this. This I like. These leathers, eh, these feel more flat. I'm not sure I'm feeling it or seeing it as much here. Could be the photo. I don't know. Um, I like his cloak. I think that's a success. Let me go for this rear shot and let's zoom in. This is a little better. Yeah, the back looks better on this one. Some of these still look pretty flat. I do like this, and I like him from the back. This this over here looks good. Um, you know, one of the things I'd say is that these models have just, like, somehow both a lot going on and yet seem to be one giant thing. They're almost too busy to direct the eye in any artistic way. Um, I think your blue glow looks really nice. Uh, I think when it comes to the texture, you want to watch out for stuff like this. Like, I don't know what this situation is where these, like, lights are drawn to the middle of this. You were trying to do something here, but I don't know what that something was. Like, I don't know what this is meant to represent or why this would be highlighted like this. This looks natural to me. We've got scuffs and texture, and it's holding, you know, along the highlights. That makes sense to me. Okay. 
All right. Cool. All right, next up, Paul. This group of gut rippers. Just wondering how they look as a cohesive unit and how the shield and skin looks. All right. Okay, so uh, let's look at these gut rippers. So I'll say these photos, Paul, are pretty bad. Um, they're pretty overexposed, so it's hard for me to tell. But from what I can see, we have a lot of the same problems I've mentioned on the previous gut rippers, right? Like <clears throat> the skin doesn't have enough variation. The leather doesn't seem like it has enough texture or stand out. And the shields look kind of flat. Um, so like, again, if you want to do the kind of gray metal shields, that's fine. But then they should have like rust or something like that or a brown color to make them kind of pop or, you know, brown or orange rust or something like that. We just need more variation in general. It's kind of hard for me to give specific feedback because unfortunately, like I said, the pictures are a little overexposed. So um, we'll want to make sure we you get that fixed up. But there you go. That's that's what I can give you. Patrick, <clears throat> Crude Hounds. Uh, try to do a quick but effective color scheme. Try to know if there's enough contrasting, like what could be done to make them look one step better. So the answer is um, like, no, <laughs> it's usually the answer. Um, if you have to ask, then there's not, is the basic answer. Like you can just, most people can take the contrast up way, 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 way higher, so much higher, as high as you think you should go, and then it's twice as much as that. Now, the the, the real answer here, though, is that um, you do have some nice beginnings of contrast, but it needs to respect the sort of volumetric highlighting better, right? So things like on the head and the top of the musculature, I mean, these models are really soft and kind of strange, but you want to shape those muscles more and really bring in not just the lights, but also the shadows. Um, and with the shadows, you want a color transition. So those should be like red, purple shadows on green, something like that to bring that down and create that nice variation, not only of contrast, but of hue. Okay. So um, as to the fur, the fur is, uh, it's interesting because you went to the yellow at the end, um, but like the, I think that's fine. I don't have any problem with the, the purple going to yellow. It just, uh, as it is there's not enough dark color in there then like this is all the same purple and then we just go to the yellow i need more darker darks down here so where we're missing contrast is in the shadow side in the fur so there you go okay next up jasper uh settled on purple from below to tie these goblins in with the trolls was uncertain about how much it would clash with the green from the goblins does the color combination work well Given the contrast of the hue between the purple and the green, is there enough contrast of value between the elements where they need more blacks in the shadows and off-white highlights? Um, there is definitely not enough contrast. We're not in the zone. We were. We need to go up. Um, the um, the wolves look quite flat. Um, again, like the fur isn't picked out enough. The top of them isn't highlighted enough. Sure, the purple on the under like purple on the undertone, by the way, is fine. That's that's no issue. Um, but just in general, they're all kind of flat. Like, why is this fur the same color as this, the same color as the leather and all of that? Like, the individual elements don't feel picked out enough or done enough to really um, to, to pack in that contrast. The skin needs to come up a lot. Um, the, uh, like, it almost feels like you're still work in progress on them, maybe? I don't, I don't know. I can't say. If that's the case, then, then yes. Continue to pop up the fur. A lot more high highlights on the top of the wolves, on the fur pieces pick out the individual elements like their top knots and the cloaks and the fur like the, you know the swords and stuff like that so that would be my basic advice for you okay next up daniel uh what is the biggest crimey spot and how can i make them more interesting without introducing more colors used only the zorn palette sure so um i like the the shields you, you know, scrape the shields and did some nice interesting imagery on those so i think that's super fun um, I like a good Zorn palette. Uh, the shields are obviously a dominating thing. By the way, if shields exist, those are the fourth component. Weapons, shields are included. You know, bases, faces, weapons, and shields, what people pay attention to. Um, you know, with the, the, the biggest thing that stands out to me is you've got a lot of metals on here. And the metals themselves don't look like they have quite enough shadowing or, or visual interest in that way. So when you're using the silver, it feels like you got some of the blue in there. But if you're using a Zorn palette, then you've got access to a black. So you want to take that black, you want to get that watered down, and you want to turn that into a glaze and really take control of some of those shadows into the metals uh, and use that that black to blue to silver to create something that really has a lot of variation and most importantly, separation elements between all of the silver. Okay, So 
that's kind of my advice for you. I don't think you need to introduce more colors. Some of your highlights could come up a little more. You know, when you're using Zorn, you generally have access to an ivory. So like with the cloth, you could pop some of the high cloth highlights up just a little, not in a big way. Doesn't need to be huge. We just need a little bit on the highest, most exposed, the edges of the folds, the, like the top of the breastplate here on the, the female one right here. You know, that kind of stuff, popping it up just a little more, bringing up that high highlight and capturing the light can go a long way. Hope that helps. All right, next up, Jack. Uh, painted these as a test before starting on Dominion. Getting interesting result and smoothness. Any suggestions for places that would be worth spexing and spending extra time on? I think these look fantastic. I love the color test. If you're Dominion box set, you go for the same thing. I think this is going to be wonderful. It's a very GW sort of painting style, and I think you execute it very well. The elements are separated nicely. There's some good texture in places, like the little, these sort of cloth hand bracer thingies. Um, I like the color of the armor very much. I think that that's soft, but it works. I like where we're coming to the bright white specular highlights, but we still build in some very nice deep shadows. I think those really work well. Um, I think the, the color itself is extremely rich. Just a small few things I noticed. Um, these are buttons meant to pin this thing together. It's like open on the leg. So the buttons should be different. They shouldn't just be blue. Like they would be buttons, actual buttons. So pick those out, you know, shadow around them and turn them like a color. Um, it's a small detail, but it's something that always jumps out to me when people don't pick those out because like they're buttons, they're, they, you can see the holes <laughs> where they would normally, you know, fasten shut for when they're in a non-battle situation and it's their, their sort of dress uniform, right? Sisters of Battle have the same thing. Um, but yeah, overall, these look great, man. I, I honestly think I don't have much feedback for you. Like in the style you're going for here, some of the golds could probably have a little more high highlight. They don't come quite up to a bright enough reflection. But the whites are creamy and smooth. The purples look really nice. The texture looks good. The armor is fantastic. So, yeah, I don't I don't have a lot of feedback. I think this is really strong work, like super strong work. I, I say dive into it, man. You're, you're going to make a great-looking Dominion set. Okay, next up, Gary, first-time poster. Uh... Looking for general feedback, been painting for a little over a year and aiming for a high tabletop level. Got about 4,000 points that needs to be painted. Uh, definitely where the knees and shoulders could use more work. Besides that, some overall feedback. Yeah, anytime you know something is wrong, then you know something is wrong. My, my general answer to you here is they could use a little more contrast in general. I'm sure it's what you were not, what you know. It's, oh boy, like super surprising. Um, be careful with these like crazy colored bases like this. You're, I, I like the alien world concept you're going for, but like they're so colorful and so distracting. The marine is the least interesting thing here. You don't want the base to steal the show. So I would honestly be a little wary of using that many bright saturated colors, especially these alien world plants. I have these same tufts. I love them, but they need to be on miniatures that are like slanesh miniatures that are crazy, right? Not sort of flat red orange blood angels. Um, you could do a lot with your Blood Angels to, to up the contrast, just do proper undershading and glaze application of the red. Um, so I've got a video on painting Blood Angels, uh, speed painting Blood Angels. You know, that, that Blood Angel I painted was very fast. You could look at that. Um, that one you happens to use oils. You don't have to do that. There's lots of other ways you could go about it. Um, but those are the kind of things I would look at. The, the, the base is a little too much. The red on the, the guys is not enough. That's the basic breakdown I'd give you. You don't need to push those into the stratosphere, but push them, but like wheel the bases in, push the contrast on the red out. You got a lot of minis to paint. So like things like undershading and stuff like that's going to be your friend. Hope that helps. All right, next up, Brandon, Squad of Incubi. Uh, they, so he says, I'm not sure if I like them. Do they feel too bright or they don't look clean or smooth enough? Any advice on how to balance them out would be great. So sure. So again, we've got the cork conundrum. See earlier comments on cork. Uh, you know, I, part of the challenge here is we have a couple different types of, of green. Like these guys do have a bit of a, as John Ninas would say, a clown fiesta, right? Because we have a, a purple that is in the magenta spectrum. So it's pushing into red. You've got a flat sort of mid-tone orange, and then you've got two different kinds of green. One of the things that's probably throwing you off is that you have these two different clashing colors of green that don't necessarily feel like they belong together. Like, honestly, probably not enough of these guys is neutral. Oh, and then you also have, like, the lava bases as well, so which are also bright red, orange, yellow. 
So there's just a lot is my answer, right? Um, and I feel like some of this needs to be desaturated or wheeled back. Like they're a little too, like part of the issue is they're just too saturated in too many different colors that is, is extremely strong. So it doesn't matter if you have a triadic color scheme that works, if they're all highly saturated, they're, it just becomes overwhelming for the eye. And that's what you're running into here. That combined with the sort of clashing colors of like the different colors of green. When one is like a jade green, it's blue green, and one is a yellow green. So we're just all over the color spectrum here, right? Like there's just no part of the wheel you didn't use here. You're just, you're swinging wildly around the whole color wheel, right? You know, if you think about it like this, right? You've got, you're on your color wheel, right? We have blue green, which is pushing into the blue for your jade, for your jade stuff. You've got green and yellow green down here in the bright color. You've got orange, yellow, orange, red, orange, and red. You've got all this down here, right? In the, uh, in the fire and in their armor. And then you've got all of this up here in the red, violet, and violet color, all of this side in their uh, cloth. So like this whole part of the color spectrum, basically everything except pure blue violet is present on these miniatures. And, and that's what's killing you, right? Now, if you wheeled some of that back, desaturated it, you'd be in a better place. Um, so like, you know, I'm not saying you go back and change these, but in the future, when you're, you're like, if you're going to integrate a green, then it needs to be one green. And that one green needs to be the green. So like all the other stuff should also be yellow green, right? Maybe you take the orange, you add in some brown tones and you desaturate it down or some gray tones or something like that, right? And weaken it. Then you'd have a different paint job on your hands and things would feel more cohesive. So hope that helps, Brandon. All right, next up, uh, Lolal, uh, Warriors of Kush, uh, covered in war paint and cat pelts. Any feedback you can give me on those two things would be appreciated. Yeah, so the war paint is always an interesting thing. These figs are, you know, rather small. Um, with war paint, you generally want to make sure that it's like, um, you want to apply it in more of a stippled fashion. It should actually, you can use like paint texturing to your advantage on it. It looks like you maybe did it on a couple of them, but not all of them. But you want to like stipple it on because it wouldn't be applied in a smooth layer. It would be patted on and stuff like that, right? It's it's put on with rough, heavy brushes or even bare hands. So it doesn't have a smoothness to it. You can use actually the texturing of paint and a stipple method to get that out. As to the cat pelts, they don't really sell because that's not actually how cat pelts look. Like these look, that looks more like a cow. And then the, the like leopard spots don't actually look like that, right? So... Um, like again, uh, leopard. Yeah, let's just look for leopards, right? Like, you know, look at the real images, right? Always just go to the source. Like that's a leopard, right? You see how the spots actually have these different colors inside. They're irregular. They're not just circles, right? You were doing it from your mind and that's how you think of leopards, but that's not actually what a leopard looks like, right? Uh, so, you know, like, you notice how they're hashy and they have little fur cuts into them. They're not even circles. They have these little lines because it's actually, you know, thousands of little hairs or furs or whatever you want to say. And then there's a different color inside and the rings and the rings are broken up. There's places where the color comes out. So there's just you, you, like Google a bunch of images of the natural cats you're trying to, to recreate. And that's going to help you create the actual thing. Okay. Always go to reality first. Okay, next up, Nick. Uh, input on the following. Are the essentially brown models visually interesting as per your comments in Exploring Colors Brown? How can you make a squad leader stand out from the rest of the squad? And I mixed a base color for the first of these. The Chainsword guy was unable to recreate it for the others. How do you, uh, how do you get that mixed across the whole squad? Sure. Okay, are they visually interesting? Yeah, they're visually interesting-ish. Um, yeah, I mean... Brown is a pretty boring color. Like, it just is. It's not visually interesting. It's not much way around that. Now, what do we do here? We integrate other colors. So, like, if the shadows came down into a more slight red tone and the highlights came up into a more ivory tone, but it was still overall that sort of mid-colors, 
then that uh, can be a long way to go, right? So the the point is is that you can push those things, uh, you can push those things around, and that will really help you hit those high highlights. Okay. Uh, so my best um, uh, my best advice for you is keep pushing those highlights up. Now, how do you mix a, or and, and glaze in some different colors in the shadows? Those kinds of things can help. Now, how do you mix a color and keep it there? Well, it's never going to be exactly the same, but it honestly doesn't matter. Like, it looks close enough. No part of this would be at all noticeable to anyone looking at it. It's fine. You just get close. <laughs> Like, you've got a little of color A and a little of color B. You can either, like, on your wet palette, you make a bunch of it all at once and then just kind of save it there and go back to it. Or you use a combined ratio, two drops of this, two drops of this. But as long as you're in the zone, nobody's going to notice. It doesn't need to be exact. Like, all of these are perfectly fine, perfectly close enough. There's no issue. Like, you know, you mentioned the red on the chainsword. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Okay. So there you go. Hope that helps, Nick. All right. So, uh, Martin, painted in oils, technique and theme heavily influenced by Mr. James Waffle. Looking for any feedback, but may not answering the one simple question. Given high table hops top standard, what would you still work on before moving on? Sure. So, uh, very Waffle influenced. I can see it. I love it. Um, you, you know, all the fire and the, the lighting and stuff. Um, yeah, it looks great. You've, you've learned a lot from, from our man and master and our, our patron saint of oils, James Waffle. Uh, if you're not watching his stuff, you should definitely go check it out. He's the man. Um, one of the things I noticed is a lot of the oranges are too flat. So if you look at how James works his fire, he has a lot of different colors in there. He can push up into the yellow and he pushes down into some deeper red, uh, brown blacks for shadows. I think that's actually one of the first things I would do. Now I think these guys meet a very high tabletop standard. Let me just say that they're fine. Like, you're good. I don't know that I would push any of that. But if you were going to push on that, then what you'd want to do is start working in a few higher highlights, really popping the poppiest lights up, and some deeper shadows pulling at, like into the light even. Like, you need, you need areas where the light is softer, and that's a red, brown, black, like a soft fade to the edge of the orange where that kind of OSL effect over the whole thing fades away. That's the stuff that jumps out at me immediately. But very cool force overall. Like, man, what a bunch of awesome work you did here. It, it looks like you were having fun right along with James. So I, I think you're definitely in the, in the space here. All right. And then last up, Jake. Uh, more non-metallic metal Luna Wolves, just like your overall impressions and the impact of these models on the unit and how the admittedly rudimentary NMM sells for a tabletop effect. Yeah, sure. So... My answer is the non-metallic in the small amounts it is, it's okay. You could pop it up a lot by getting stronger edge highlights on everything. Um, that's probably the number one thing I noticed. Like the little silver pieces here on the guns and stuff like that on the swords. A little more edge highlighting is really going to go a long way towards selling your, your effect. Um, the places that look the best are things like these little buttons or whatever is on his leg i don't know why certain space wolves have weird buttons on their legs um like they're like they're a freaking dalek or something uh but the uh that's probably the number one thing now as a unit they look fine the soft colors are fine the contrast on the wolf itself on the armor coloring is still a little limited um it could use some more definitely use more contrast on that but on the non-metallic, even just making sure your edges are brightly popped is really going to be your next step to making sure that the non-metallic sells. Um, some places work better than others. So, uh, and I think that things like the these little transitions on the on the uh, like the tops of the gun and stuff like that are nice. But again, if you popped out them edges, that would go that would sell a lot more. So, there you go. That brings us to the end. Uh, so, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you to everybody who submitted this month. Uh, really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you to everybody who had the 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 <laughs> the bravery to submit um, for judgment. Uh, we'll be back again next month doing this. Don't forget, if you want to uh, join us, you can do so. Uh, the link is down in the description. Uh, if you uh, uh, have any questions or anything like that, 
Uh, I'm here once a month doing this, but always in the group. Make sure you ask those questions. There's lots of people who are here who are positive, who are ready to help. And if you're one of the people reading other people's questions and you know the answer, give them an answer, give positive feedback. Take a second out of your day to say, wow, I really love that. If you see something you like, tossing a like at somebody, throwing down a comment and saying, this is super cool. can really just change somebody's entire day. You improve somebody's life through three seconds of your own. It's one of the coolest things you can do. Keeping this community positive, hobby focused, and always helping each other out is my number one goal. And I hope it's the goal of everybody who's part of this community as well. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who submitted. As always, we'll see you next time.